So um, I'm not sure that Commissioner Jones is gonna be able to join us this morning. Um, so I'd like to call to order the um, 2022 Monroe County Board of Finance meeting. And um, first, um, I will note that Treasurer Jessica McClellan, Commissioner Julie Thomas and myself are present, so we have a quorum. And the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from January 20th, 2021. Do I have any motion? I move approval. I second. Excellent, is there any discussion? I just wanted to point out that I have um, corrected the signature lines to say Penny Githens, vice president and Lee Jones, commissioner. I had those two switched. And yes. Anita has the updated packet. So that's, she'll send you the correct minutes to sign. Okay. Okay. Um, Good. Okay. I hadn't even noticed that. I didn't know if it was what the, if the titles for the minutes were to be what they were last year. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. It looks um, like um, Commissioner Jones has joined us. Excellent. Excellent. And I would, um, like to make a motion should to... we should we vote on approval of the minutes oh i'm sorry i thought we did <laughs> no we yeah, had a yeah. motion at a second <laughs> um do who should be calling the roll here i will call the roll if that's okay with you guys that would be wonderful thank you mr cockrell uh board member thomas yes uh, board member giffins yes board member jones yes Board member McClellan. Yes. Motion is approved four to zero. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the election of officers for the 2022 Board of Finance. I would like to make a motion to uh, appoint Lee Jones as president of the Board of Finance and uh, Treasurer McClellan as the secretary. Very good, I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion? Sounds great. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to serve. Yes, uh, Mr. Cocker, would you call? Board uh, member Thomas. Yes. Board member Giffins. Yes. Board member Jones. Yes. Board member McClellan. Yes. Motion is approved four to zero. So uh, Commissioner Jones, would you like to take over the meeting then? Or do you want me to run it? Continue it. Um, I don't actually have the agenda. I'm sorry. I hadn't realized this was going to be starting at quarter till. Well, the next thing on the agenda is the presentation of Monroe County's public funds investment management policy for 2022. I believe that Ms. McClellan has that for us. I'll present that to the board. Every year, the board is required to to agree on establishing an investment policy, uh, and I'm reading off the investment policy, this is the wording, to formalize the investment goals and the objectives that the, uh, that the county is going to use towards prudent and efficient investment management decisions being made by Monroe County government. It's important to use prudent investment policies to ensure the safety of our funds. Um, and the the investment policy is broken up here into different sections and I'm gonna briefly go over. Um, the scope of this policy is that it supersedes any previous policy. And the policy of the treasurer is to protect and grow the financial assets under the treasurer's care. The tr and section three, the treasurer has the authority to invest the funds that we have um, real cash. I'm not talking about what's in the funds ledger. I'm talking about real cash. Um, number four is prudence. And prudence is defined here as making investments with judgment and care under the prevailing circumstances, which a person of prudence and discretion and intelligence exercises in the management of those affairs for investment, not for speculation, and considering the probable safety of the capital, as well as the probable income to be de derived. And that's just really defining that prudence is, in, is under the discretion of the treasurer 
but also under the prevailing circumstances do play a role. That's really important for this past year because we are in COVID. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit more when we look at their investment report. So the objectives for the county in, inv in investing are gonna be safety, liquidity, and yield, which is the return on investment. The treasurer is only allowed to put funds into uh, um, accounts approved by the Indiana Board for Depositories, and those are um, listed in the packet. Um, approved depositories are protected by the public insurance, uh, the public deposit insurance fund. So all money in uh, public money in the banks are fully protected by the state of Indiana. Um, from any loss that might occur if the bank was to fail. So, so the county can put money into deposit bank accounts that are listed on the public deposit investment list. If uh, we are going to um, start a new investment in a bank account, we have to solicit rights um, and we, we can easily do that. Um, off and further authorized investments outside of bank accounts are CDs and government-backed government securities and bonds. So a government-backed security or bond is fully protected um, by the United States government. So if anything were to happen, we would get all of our money invested in that bond returned to us. And the final section of the investment report um, states that only up to 25% of the county's cash portfolio can be invested in long-term funds, which means that the final maturity is between two and no more than five years. That really briefly covers everything in the investment policy. It is essentially this same policy every year, but we do go over it and we do check to make sure that we are still following all of the state laws and investing um, our county money legally and correctly and prudently. That's, um, that's the whole policy. And if you'd like to ask any questions or make any suggestions, I would be happy to hear those. No, when I read through it, it seemed very straightforward. So thank you. Thanks. Do we need a motion to accept it? Um, I move that we accept the, is it 2022 fin or 2021 finance report? 22, sorry, 2022 finance report. But this was the, okay. Are you, are you say, saying that we, um, are accepting the uh, our policy on the uh, investment of funds, the management policy, for the investment of funds. Is that what you're? I think you need to approve the policy, not okay. accept. Okay, um, I move we approve the policy for the investment of financial funds for 2022. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Cockrell, would you call the roll? Board Member Thomas? Yes. Board Member Giffins? Yes. Board Member Jones? Yes. Board Member McClellan? Yes. Motion is approved to four to zero. Okay, next on the agenda was presentation of the 2021 investment report. Okay, the 2021 investment, investment report is the, um, the Excel the Excel document in that PDF, it's the blue and white lines. It's not very exciting because we did not make very much money last year because interest rates were hovering around 0.1% or 0.01%, so one basis point. So our total that we earned on all of our um, cash in the bank and in some treasury bonds was $173,116.48. On the very bottom cell of that Excel spreadsheet. We're gonna do better this year. Rates are going up. 
all of that money gets um, quietest into the general fund, except for some highway funds and some aviation funds. So we keep track of all of that money and the county can use it as soon as we get it. Yes, That's I noticed all I that. To say about that. I noticed that a good bit of the income from that came from actually government bonds. Yes, yes, it did come from government bonds. Yeah. We have a financial advisor that helps us um, um, look for those bonds and purchase those bonds. And it's a very good program for the county. When bank, they're always a little bit higher than the bank deposits that we get. I also looked into getting another CD for in 2021 and even CD rates were not any higher than bank rates. So we're just left the money liquid in the bank, we kept what we had in um, US treasury bonds. And we will look towards more of that in uh, 2022. It looks like we got very, very little from the Indiana Trust or trust mm -hmm. Indiana, um, but what's the advantage of putting any money in the trust Indiana? It, it, it diverse, diversifies a little bit and it's a Indiana, it's a um, Indiana wide pool. And so the more money that's in there, the more money the, the pool can earn. It just strengthens the earning power of that, of that chunk of money. And I just, I just think it's a good policy for us as a county to get in there with schools and libraries and cities and towns and put a, just a, it's really just a small, it's $2 million that's in there, about 2 million and in a, in $25,000. And I think it's just a good idea to have something in there. And before 2021, in 2020, it was actually doing a little bit better than banks. It's, it's a new thing, so I wanted to try it out. And I think it's been really good to use. It's completely liquid. So we can move money out of there back into the bank if we need to the same day. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the um, investment report? Uh, move, move acceptance of the 2021 accept, uh, investment report. Second. Uh, is there any other discussion? Mr. Cocker, would you call the roll? Board Member Thomas. Yes. Board Member Giffins. Yes. Board Member Jones. Yes. Board Member McClellan. Yes. Motion is approved, 4-0. Next is presentation of the approved depository list. Yes, um, we don't have to approve this, but it has to be in the packet. This is printed from the Indiana State Treasurer's Office. These are all the banks that are approved for Indiana public funds deposits. Yes, over three pages long. Yes, <laughs> as long. Okay, if we don't have to approve it, then um, let's move on to presentation of the current cash on hand. Current cash on hand, when I created the packet um, last week on January 19th, um, county cash on deposit is 119 million $215,246. And then I have it broken down in this spreadsheet um, into the different accounts that they are in at the different banks. I point out that Bank of New York Mellon is the holding account for our government bonds. So when a government bond receives interest or when a government bond matures and we get all of that, we get the original principal back there has to be a holding account that it, that it uh, sweeps into. And so that account is just there to sweep in and out of investing in those bonds. So and many of our accounts are at First Financial, including our operating account, which is where all of our checks are written, and our biggest uh, savings account, which is called general savings on this, um, on this spreadsheet. We have many other savings accounts. We also have a separate savings account for the ARPA funds. It's the last line under First Financial. So that's the 14 million. So any, it, we're not required to track that interest anymore. The law, the rule, the, the rule has changed, but we set that account up the minute we knew that we were getting that money. We set that account up so we could see it and track it. 
just because it'd be good to know. So there it is, if you ever want to know. <laughs> All right, we have a little bit in German American. We have about 2 million in Trust Indiana, and we have a lot of old, old national accounts that are tied to our TIF bonds, and that's all that they're there for. So that's the end of cash on hand. Thank you. Uh, do we need to have a motion to accept this? Um, Mr. Cockrell, or are we okay? I do not believe so. I think it's just presentation of information. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next is the cancellation of the warrants from 2022. And this is just another item that we're required to present to the Board of Finance. It's also required to be um, in the county auditor's office and in the county treasurer's office. So it's in three places. After two years, county warrants expire. And it's written on the check. And we're required by State Board of Accounts to, ex to cancel those, those checks. And this is a list of those checks that we've canceled. Um, oh, and I do know that the auditor's office reaches out periodically throughout the year to every department and says, hey, these are the outstanding, the old outstanding checks that your office uh, requested. So please catch up on those and try to get your, try to get those, those, those people to cash those checks. So this the list is a lot shorter than last year. I think that process is working well. So this is checks that the county's issued to people, not that they owe us money. Correct. Checks the county has issued to people and we are canceling them and they're, they're void after two years. They had two years to cash them. Well, we thank everyone who made that donation. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of sad. I wish that it, I wish that this wasn't a thing, but I think it is for every big company and we're just like, we're a pretty big, we're a pretty big company. Okay, the only item left on the agenda for the North County Board of Finance is any public comment. And I don't see anyone with their hands hand raised. So um, can we call an end to this meeting then? I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Copper, would you call the roll? Uh, Board Member Thomas. Yes. Board Member Giffins. Yes. Board Member Jones. Yes. Board Member McClellan. Yes. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you to Treasurer McClellan. Excellent work as always. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. It's really great to work together. All right. Have a good Commissioners meeting. All okay. right. Thank you. So we are on the same. We are. Okay. That's, That's very helpful. <laughs> Anybody need a moment or should we just roll right into our board meeting? We're good. Okay.